Praise God. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this is the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice, and we're going to be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Go ahead and be seated and relax. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. You should increase. That's what we're going to talk about today is you should increase, and we're not talking about uh, uh, physically increase, you know. <laughs> A lot of us would like to not physically increase, so I don't want to go there, but we should increase, and the, the example we should always use in the Bible and in our lives is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is who we want to uh, follow, who we want to be like, and the Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and verse 30, it says, he must increase but I must decrease. And the, the one talking there is uh, John the Baptist. And John is speaking about it, and he's saying to his disciples, he's talking to them. We're going to read the occasion in just a moment. But he's speaking to them, and he, he makes a profound statement that really goes down to us today, and that is, he says, he must increase, but I myself must decrease. And as we receive Jesus Christ more and more into our lives, uh, certain parts of our character, per, certain parts of things that are in our lives really ought to decrease and uh, certain parts of Jesus and, and, and the Spirit of God should increase in our lives. So uh, when John speaks that, he speaks of himself and John could have been prideful. He had followers that would come, he was clear out in the wilderness and people would leave the city and travel all the way out there just to see him. And he could have said, well, hey, I'm somebody but he, his pride wasn't there. He said, I must decrease and he must increase. So he got rid of more himself and he allowed Jesus to have even more room. He stepped back and let Jesus have room. He did that in ministry, but we and you and I, we need to do that in our lives. If you'd read uh, the New Living Translation, uh, John 3, verses 26 through 36. Now, I like this translation. Uh, it talks to us so we can actually understand it. And this is John now, John the Baptist, and his disciples are coming to him and telling him something. And now watch what John says. It's, it's pretty interesting. Can you go ahead and read that? So John's disciples came to him and said, Rabbi, the man you met on the other side of the Jordan River, the one you identified as a Messiah, is also baptizing okay, people. On. The one you identified as a Messiah. Remember he said uh, uh, the Lamb of God? Remember that? Jesus came to get water baptized, and he said, this, there's the Lamb of God. And so he identified him as the Messiah. The Messiah is the, the, the anointed one, the one who lifts burdens and, and takes yokes off your, your neck. The Messiah is the one that the Jews still are looking to come. A lot of the Jews still are looking for the Messiah to come where we know the Messiah has come. And once again, if, we, if you're studying the Word with us, it's important for you to know that uh, Jesus came the first time to pay for our sins came humble the next time he comes as lord of lords and king of kings uh, the jews thought he was going to come that way and sit on the throne and he wasn't here to do that at that time so they're still looking for that uh, that's why we really need to minister to the jews and uh, the bible tells us there'll be a, seems to say that there'll be a great revival amongst the jews uh, so i'm looking forward to that to take place but as a whole the, the orthodox jews and the jewish faith believes that jesus hasn't come the messiah hasn't come so John the Baptist was Jewish, his disciples were Jewish, and now his disciples are talking to him. They said, hey, you know that one on the other side of the Jordan? So now on the other side of the Jordan, when Jesus came, came to the Jordan, he was baptized. And then John moved even further out, and he says, remember that man that came on the other side of the Jordan, and you identified him as the Messiah, the one who lifts burdens, the one who takes the yoke off our necks, uh, so the anointed one. That's what Messiah means. Uh, go ahead, continue to read if you would, please. And everybody is going to him instead of coming to us. Now that could have been a heady thing because here John had all these followers. Even some of the religious people would come out just to you know, condemn him and see what the heck he was talking about. And now it says, uh, his, one of his disciples says, hey, you know that one back there on the other side of the Jordan that you baptized and you said that uh, he was the Messiah? Now people are following him and not following us as much. Go ahead. John replied, no one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. You yourselves know how plainly I told you. This is John talking to his disciples. He says, you yourselves know how plainly. I didn't beat around the bush with you. I told you 
I am not the Messiah. I am only here to prepare, to prepare the way for him, the Messiah. It is the bridegroom. Now, now watch this. The Bible tells us that we are the bride of Christ. I know it sounds funny to us men. We're the bride of Christ. You know, wait a minute. I'm not a girl. Well, the church as a whole is the, 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 the bride of, of Christ. And he's coming back for the church. He's, the Bible says he's like a groom coming for his bride, the church. Okay? So that's what's being talked about here is the, the, the church, the body of Christ here on this earth is looked at as, as the bride of Christ and Jesus is looked at as the bridegroom who he comes to receive his bride to himself, uh, the second coming uh, uh, the, of Jesus Christ. But notice it says, I am not the Messiah. I am here only to prepare the way for him, the, the groom. It is the bridegroom who marries the bride. And the bridegroom's friend, he's talking about himself, is simply glad to stand with him and hear his vows. He said, I'm just simply glad to be around this guy, this Jesus. Therefore, I am filled with joy at his success. He must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. And that should be somewhat of a prayer in our hearts. I'm not saying you should be a piece of trash. What I'm saying, though, is we should be saying, I want Christ to shine through me more and more, less of me, more of him. That's, that's what really he's trying to say here. He has <clears throat> come from above, and he is greater than anyone else. We are of the earth, and we speak of earthly things, but he has come from heaven and is greater than anyone else because all the rest of us weren't it wasn't there he testifies about what he has seen and what he has heard but how few believe what he tells them anyone who accepts his testimony can confirm that god is true for he is sent by god he speaks god's word and God's word gives him the spirit without limit. Uh, this is, uh, you and I uh, don't have the spirit without limit. That's why Jesus, excuse me for a minute, you might hit the mic down for a minute, I'm going to cough. <laughs> I, I didn't want to blow your eardrums out, you know. Uh, Jesus had the spirit without uh, limit. We, we have, uh, we're limited. He was not limited. That's why he could, uh, apostle, prophet, he could do all the different gifts without any problem. He, he could handle it because he had the spirit without limit. The father loves his son and has put everything into his hands. And anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. Um, that, that means uh, what Jesus said. Remember Jesus said, uh, God so loved the world he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you, if you know that, say amen. amen. This is John the Baptist talking about it John the Baptist is talking about that. He says, the father loves his son and has put everything into his hands and anyone who believes in God's son has eternal life. See, that's what's important. John the Baptist never said anyone who believes in me has eternal life, but he did say anyone who believes in the groom, anyone who believes in the son of God, anybody who believes in Jesus has eternal life. Now, everyone say, God bless you. All right, I want, to, I want you to put up Psalms 115 and verse 14, if you would. I think you might have it for, but it's 14 is what I'm looking for. It's Psalms 115, verse 14. Okay. And uh, if you would read that as soon as you get it, Donna. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Now, the Lord shall increase you more and more. And, and what I like to say is we want the Lord to increase in us more and more. And so the more of the Lord in us, the more we increase... So John the Baptist said, I should be less and he should become more. And my thing is we should increase, but we should increase because the Lord is uh, more and more in us. Amen? Amen? It's not because there's more and more of us, but there's more and more of him in us and it helps us increase. Ungodly uh, nature that's in us, godly nature that in us, Jesus, ungod uh, godly nature should increase in us. And ungodly nature should decrease in us. As you walk with the Lord, ungodly nature should decrease and godly nature or Christ in us should increase. So at first you give your heart to the Lord, people look at you, you may be saved, but you're, you, you still don't really represent Jesus Christ as pure as Jesus Christ is. You never will represent him as pure as he is, but you'll get better because as you walk with him, uh, ungodliness should decrease in your life and more of Christ should increase in your life. And, and that's what that scripture is saying. Now in Isaiah, I use this because this is ungodly nature. Uh, 
Satan represents ungodliness or ungodly nature. Uh, Satan is the opposite of God. There's, there, there's God. Now when I say that, I don't say equal to God in power. Some people say God and the devil are equal. And boy, they both have the same amount of power. One is good, one is bad. No, that's not true. They're opposite, but God has tons more power than the devil has. Amen? Amen. Now, the Bible lets us know, it seems to say in the Word of God, God pretty clearly that, that Satan was an archangel and that pride was found in him. Iniquity was found within him. He wasn't made that way, but somehow iniquity was found in him. And, he's, and he, what we read in the Word of God, it, it's letting us know that he caused a rebellion in heaven. And he was cast out, and one-third of the angels followed him. And so uh, we call him Lucifer. And so I'm going to read to you, and I want to read to you what uh, many of us believe he said that got, that got God's attention. So what I'm about to read, when someone talks about themselves, I did this, I did this, I, 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 I kind of always think of the scripture. If you, can you have that one, Isaiah yep. 14, 12? Okay, if you can read that and do that, she's... You know, it's like okay. chewing gum, walking, and, and, and riding a bike or somehow. I don't know what she's doing, like juggling maybe. She's trying to do everything. Can you go ahead and try to read that? And sure. I'll probably interrupt you, but go ahead. How art thou fallen from now, this heaven? this is God speaking to someone. Okay, go ahead. How, how art thou fallen from heaven? Go ahead. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast... Said in thine heart. Can okay, I watch? I, I, I want you, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, Chris, you you got a loud mouth probably. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if you're doing it. I'm messing with you. Steve told me you did. I'm okay. <laughs> Your good buddy Steve told off me. So every time, every time you hear her say, the, you hear her say the word I, I want you to count it, okay? Because now watch in this small amount of space how many times Satan talks about I. And that's what we're talking about today. We need to increase. But we need to increase with God. We need to increase with Jesus flowing through us. And we need to get rid of other stuff. We decrease in ungodliness and we increase in godliness. Amen? So now watch Satan would represent ungodliness. And one of the big things of ungodliness is self-centeredness and pride. Ego. Uh, you're above God. And so when you first get into the family of God, you tell the God and you tell the church what to do. And as you start to follow God, you start letting God show you what to do. And then you start saying, you know, the church isn't all that bad. You know, at first I thought that Vern was a dork. And now I still think he's a dork, but he's a nice dork, you know. <laughs> no, you're not a dork at all. Go ahead. Uh, read it. And Chris, will you please count real loud, okay? Now, you don't read it, Chris. You just count every time you say I, okay? Please go ahead. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into the heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Yet thou... Now, now watch. Now, now that's God saying, you said these things. You said, aya, 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 aya. I, 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 I. All the other angels are there worshiping God. And Satan raises up and say, I will, I will raise above God. I, 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 I think, I think, I think, I know better. I know. One, two, three, four. How many times, Chris? Five times in that short period of time. He said, I, 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 I. Now God says something. And what God says is a whole lot more important than I, 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 I. Okay? So why don't you read that, that what God says? Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To the sides of the pit. It, it, so, so God says, when you center on I, Satan, I'm, you're going to go to hell. And so we don't want a lot of I's in us. We want a lot of him in us. Amen? We want to increase in Christ and decrease in our own self-will. We want to increase in the kingdom of God inside of us and decrease in the kingdom of darkness. Uh, pride. Uh, it talks about pride over in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18. Pride is talked about in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. I'm going to go ahead and have this read, and then I'm going to, we're going to talk about what pride really is. Because we saw it in Satan, but sometimes we don't see it in us, and we don't even mean to not see it. We're not trying to be mean. We just don't see it. 
So we're going to look at this verse. Can you go ahead and read that verse and I'll explain what pride is? Pride, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Now, pride is, I mean, if I ask, if you shoot some words at me that you would say pride is. Go ahead, just shout it out. Not all at once, please. Like one at a time, maybe. What is pride? Arrogance. Thank you. Everyone's trying to be humble right now, so nobody will say anything. Okay, arrogance. That would be pride. How many would say that was pride? Arrogance. Uh, give me another word. To, but conceited. Yeah, okay, conceited, arrogance. But really, let me give you an under... It, it, all that is included in about, about what I'm about to say, in what I'm about to say. Pride is preferring self-will over God's will. Got that? Pride is when you prefer your self-will over God's will. Satan preferred his will over God's will. So pride that goeth before destruction is where you start preferring your will over God's will. And, and you, you don't even listen to God because it's what you want. It's what you think. It's this, it's that. Yes, it's arrogance, and yes, it's these other things. But if you want to get a definition for it, here's, here's one that we can understand. And we've all been caught here. We didn't mean to be caught there, but we've got caught there. We've all started preferring our own will over God's will. Well, I don't think I'd have to, I don't think I don't, no, I don't, and no, no, you know, some people don't come to church. You say, well, that's not really right. Well, wait a minute, God said, don't forsake the gathering together of God's people as the manner of some are. You say, well, it doesn't really matter. There you go. That's pride. What do you mean it's pride? Because it's preferring your will over God's spoken will. Amen? Amen. So we need to understand what pride is, because as we go along, uh, we have to understand, we never want to go above the Word of God. We never want to say, I know more than God knows, or this is what God says, but I don't care. Over in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 4, we know this scripture. Some here may know this scripture. You may have gone through this scripture. But as we go through this, I, I want to tell you why this scripture is important. Now watch this. If pride is, and it is, preferring your will over God's will, it's when we think we know more than God. We hear something and we say, we equate it. Here's God's thoughts. And we hear maybe from somewhere else and we go, I think I choose to believe that. We're exalting that above God's will. Or you could say, we're exalting our thoughts above God's thoughts. You, you follow me? So, so when we choose our will over God's will, that's pride. And that's Satan. That's what he did. That's the kingdom of darkness. That's the oldest trick in the book. Where you say, I think that knowledge is more, or, or, or more valuable than God's knowledge. That's pride. That's saying, my will be done, not your will. Not your will be done, not mine. It's my will be done and not yours. So we have to be careful about that. So let me read this. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 4. Having that been said, what I just said is when we allow our thoughts to say, our thoughts are even higher than God's thoughts. Or what I just heard, and the Bible says that, but I choose to believe this. Watch. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You don't have a, uh, in the spiritual realm, does it no good to have a gun? Uh, in the real world, it may, but in the, car in the spirit world, it does not. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The spiritual weapons are not carnal. But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now watch. What are strongholds? Watch. Casting down imagination. I imagine this and God says that. I imagine this and God says that. Or somebody writes a book or somebody else has a theory or somebody does that and the Bible says that. That's an imagination compared to God. God's knowledge. They're imagining things. God is knowledge. Amen? Amen. For the weapons of our, for our, our uh, warfare are not carnal because they do you no good in the spirit realm. But they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down these imaginations that say we know more than God does. And every high thing that exalts its, exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God says this, this says that. That's pride. That's Satan in heaven saying, I'm going to exalt myself before God. It's me saying, I exalt myself before God because this knowledge is greater than what God... No, be careful. Be careful. Uh, we're allowing the wrong thing to increase in us. And we should allow that stuff to decrease us believers 
and God to increase. We don't decrease God and increase this other stuff and say this knowledge is more important than God's knowledge. We should get rid of that stuff and increase in God's knowledge and exalt Him. Amen? Pulling down the strongholds, casting down imaginations, and it says, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge that God has. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Satan should have done, when those thoughts went through him, he should have said, no, I'm not going to go for this. I'm casting those thoughts down. I'm going to honor God. But instead he said, yeah, I kind of like this idea. I know more than God. And if we're not careful, we'll get educated in some kind of other religion or we'll get educated in school or we'll, we'll, we'll think we know something. We, and, and it's good to have education. I have education. We, we think education is fine and important. But anything that exalts itself before God, the Word of God, we have to be careful. Amen? Yeah. Because anything that exalts itself before God is saying, I prefer my will or people's will more than I do God's will and that is pride. We should have more of God and less of worldly stuff, not less of God and more of worldly stuff. And that's one of the things we always have to be careful about, not allowing other people to put thoughts into our mind that demean what God is saying. In Matthew chapter 23 and verse 12 it says, And whosoever shall exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. God says, when you say God, I think I'm smart, I did good in school, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty good on this, but I exalt you, and I humble myself before you. I believe what you say. God says, then you're going to be exalted. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 11, for whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So that's in both those Gospels it says that. Now there's, um, the, if you're taking notes, point two would be increasing and decreasing can be done at the same time. Increasing and decreasing can be done at the same time. Um, um, what we're really saying is this. Say, say we have a, a, a bowl here and we pour. There's something in there you don't like. You keep pouring water. Uh, there's a liquid in there you don't like. If you keep pouring water in there, pretty soon it dispenses everything that was in there. It keeps going and, and pretty soon the, the bowl is full now of that pure water. So you can actually increase in the right thing at the same time decrease in the garbage. So you increase in the good and de you can do it at the same time or simultaneously. Um, uh, things that you should decrease in would be anxiety as a believer. Believers, we should decrease in anxiety. Worry. <laughs> we, should, <laughs> we should decrease in worry. Fear. We should decrease in fear. As you pour faith in, as you pour the Word of God in, as you say, you know what, I'm going to believe God, uh, it pours in and that other stuff, you increase in God and you decrease in worldliness. You increase in the kingdom of God and you decrease in worldliness. Uh, selfishness, as you take in the Word of God and you allow God to pour His grace and love into you and His knowledge into you. So anxiety, worry, fear, selfishness, and sorrow. Things that you should increase in. Joy, peace, and love. Or we could say the fruit of the Spirit. So why don't we go ahead and read that. Uh, uh, joy, peace, and love we increase in. But let me just read to you. As you allow God's Spirit to come in and you don't try to exalt my will over His will, you don't argue thoughts with God. You just go with God and believe God. And you cast down imaginations and anything that would try to exalt itself what God says. It says, but in Galatians 5, verse 22, it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance. It says against there, there's, there's no law. Uh, against such there is no law. And what it's saying is as we fill ourselves with God, what will happen is you'll dissipate or get rid of, you'll decrease in this ungodliness or the worldly, and you'll increase 
in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is love, joy, peace. The kingdom of God, the spirit of God is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And so how do, I, how do I become more like Jesus? Well, by pouring in more of God. And the more of God you pour in, the more, the more a, a thought goes through your mind and says, but I, no, you think, oh my goodness, I remember Chris counting one, two, three, four, five times. I don't want to do that. I choose to follow God. Amen? See, every time you increase in the things of the kingdom of God, now, now hear me, this is good news. Every time you increase with the things in the kingdom of God, you decrease in the things of the kingdom of darkness. Amen. So anytime you increase, if somebody says, I need to get rid of all these things, and so they're concentrating on the evil, just pour in the good. Just pour in the good things. And that you, as you increase in the things of the kingdom of God, you'll automatically start decreasing in the things in the, in the kingdom of darkness. Amen? Yeah. Uh, you know, as Christians, we have a habit. We, we want everybody pure. When they come into the camp, family of God, we want them uh, confessing Jesus today, baptizing tomorrow, and walking on water the third day. It doesn't work that way. What we need to do is, is encourage them, get them saved, bring them to the kingdom of God, and then keep pouring the word of God into them. Keep pouring the word of God into them. Keep pouring. And as you pour the word of God into them and they're able to receive the word of God, we'll dissipate or we'll overflow or we'll get rid of the other stuff. Amen? Amen. So you can increase and decrease it at the same time. Now let me say this. If you're not careful, you can reverse that and you can increase in the wrong things and decrease in the, in the good things. Amen? So we want to make sure we increase in the right things. You know, we do. So we want to make sure we take in the Word of God. Turn to somebody and say, oh, that's you. You're decreasing in good stuff, and I'm increasing in good. <laughs> Other areas we need to increase in. I want to talk to you about that. We really started with this verse. Donna, could you read Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 52? Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Now, Jesus is our example. Okay, now remember this. Jesus is our example. Satan is not our example. I, 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 I think I, 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 I. No, no. I know more than God. I know. No, we don't want to do that. It hurts us and harms us. So we want to be like Jesus. So now we want to follow him. So what did Jesus do? He increased. Now watch what he increased in. There's three things mentioned here that he increased in in this one verse. Why don't you go ahead and read it? Excuse me, if you would, please. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Ever say wisdom? wisdom? Jesus increased in wisdom. That's one of the things we can increase in, wisdom. And we're going to read about that in a moment. But then it says in what? What was the next thing? Wisdom and what? Stature. Stature can be physically, you know, you can, you can be born a little baby, and then you grow up, and you're, you're all of a sudden seven feet tall. You've increased in physical stature. But uh, I don't think that scripture is really talking about physically it could be talking physically but also spiritually because you can get born as a into the body of christ and you're a baby but as you grow in the things of christ you you grow in spiritual stature amen so he increased he increased in stature also in wisdom and stature and then there's another one what's the next one in favor with god and man and in favor so he he increased in wisdom stature and in favor with god and man God loves us that listen to him. God just loves us. That's why he says, if you humble yourself, I will exalt you. So uh, areas we can increase in is wisdom. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. That the, Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. We can receive from God wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In Proverbs chapter 4, now verse 5, I want you to look at how important wisdom is. Remember, Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature uh, and in favor. So we want to look at wisdom right now. How important is wisdom? Proverbs is a book that's uh, pretty important, and it tells you, it's a, it has some really wise things to say. It's a book of wisdom. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. Forget it not, neither decline from the words of thy mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about wisdom about God. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. 
exalt her, meaning wisdom, and she shall promote thee. You remember, uh, if you humble yourself, you'll be promoted. The wisdom says we humble ourselves, we exalt God. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee, and she shall bring thee to honor. When thou dost embrace her, it's talking about wisdom, she shall give to thy head an uh, ornament of grace. Oh, wouldn't you like that? And a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive the saying, and the years of thy life, the life, thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall, uh, shall be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. He said wisdom is important because when you're living this life, if you, you get this wisdom, you won't stumble. You won't fall like some will. Take, first, uh, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. A wisdom is important. You're here today. You're not here today for my wisdom. If you are, you're in deep, deep trouble. Because we don't talk about my wisdom because that, that wouldn't amount to anything. What we're doing is we're talking about wisdom from God. Amen? Amen? And so when we get that kind of wisdom, he says, get wisdom, cherish wisdom, and it will exalt you. Put that other stuff down. Exalt God's wisdom. Humble yourself. Not your self-will or other people's will, but his will be done in your life. Let he be increased and the kingdom of darkness and all that other stuff be decreased. You can do it at the same time. As you get wisdom, you automatically start dispensing or getting rid of uh, stuff that the world says is wisdom, or you thought, now we'll get our minds straightened out and we'll be blessed. Amen? Amen. Stature is another thing. I'm going to ask you to read that if you would, Don. I think you have it. We're starting with the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. We're going to start with Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And let me see, how far did I go here, Donna? I went all the way through Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. So she's going to start in verse 11 of Ephesians 4. She's going to go through Ephesians uh, 4, 16. Okay. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. So, okay, now, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Remember that, wisdom and stature. As you take in God, when you dispense and get rid of this other stuff, when you and I go his will and his, what he says in his word and cast down imaginations and stuff, then all of a sudden we, are, we grow in wisdom and in stature in the position God places you in. You'll go from this to that to that to this. He will place you and gift you and put you in other positions. And that's what he's talking about here in Ephesians. He's saying... I want you to notice what happens to those that actually humble themselves. They take in God, and they listen to God, and they put the world out, and they listen to what God says, and watch. He'll start gifting people with different positions, different areas, different stature. Go ahead. He gave some what? Or some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry. Now, and I want... I, that's important. I'm going to stop here. And Gary, you probably could preach on this. And Matt, I think you could. As a matter of fact, uh, Matt's gone through Bible school. And uh, it says here, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. Now watch. Why did he give pastors and teachers and evangelists and prophets? Why did he give apostles? For the perfecting of the saints. And then there's a comma. So, so my job is to perfect the saints. My job is to preach the word then I perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. So um, my job is to preach the word and get you ready so you can do the work of the ministry. That's what, it doesn't say give uh, apostles, prophets, teachers, and pastors, and they, uh, they uh, perfect the saints, and they also do the work of the ministry. No, remember the apostles were, they, they came to the apostles and they said, hey, look, the Grecian women, uh, they're not getting served. They're, not a, they're kind of upset. And they said, pick among you some who can be in charge of that because we're going to spend our time in reading the word and praying because they had to perfect the saints for the work of the ministry. So they said, we can't leave praying and studying the word and spending time before the Lord 
to do that also and working on the tables. So we need to have people do the work of the ministry. We have people here that do work in the ministry here. If I went around the room, there's so many that do that. You're doing your job. You're doing it great. And, and, and so don't worry about that. Be happy. Amen? But some people say, well, pastor, you should be ushering. You should be doing the sound. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. Uh, we have a prayer meeting. How come you're not at every prayer meeting, every men's ministry meeting, every woman's ministry? Every... Because my job is to perfect the saints so they can do the work of the ministry. Amen? I just wanted to go there because some people sometimes get me. I, I myself used to get mixed up about that because I was raised in a church where I thought the pastor should do everything. But when I went to Brother Sumrall's church, I soon found that out. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, wherever I left off, why don't you go ahead? For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. He's saying you're going to grow in stature as you're getting ministered to, as you're taking in the word, as you're doing that, as you're apostles, the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists are doing their job. You receive that and it helps you do the work of the ministry and you're not going to be deceived because you're getting rid of garbage and you're putting in the right thing. Go ahead if you would please. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Makes the increase of the body. So you and I can increase and get wisdom and in stature, and we'll be doing things for the kingdom of God. Amen? So as you and I draw close to God, we will grow in wisdom. We will grow in stature. You may start... I, I had a, a, a spiritual daddy... I guess I had a hundred of them, but I, I had a spiritual daddy. His name was Ed Dufresne. And Ed, he called, he called himself my spiritual daddy. And I, I kind of liked it, you know. But I said, well, Brother Summerall calls me his spiritual daddy. He calls himself my spiritual daddy. He said, he's your spiritual grandpa. <laughs> I said, well, you tell him that. I'm not going to tell him that. And him and Brother Summerall were close. So. But he used to say this. He said, you know what? When I came into... He, the latter days of his life, um, he would flow, uh, flew around the country ministering everywhere. He would encourage young pastors like myself. He would, he would preach. He'd go overseas. He, he preached and ministered all over the place. He was a, a something else for God. He really was. But one of the things he taught about is when he started out, he came to church and he didn't know what to do. He knew he loved God and knew he really cared about God. He knew he really wanted to serve God. But he also knew he wasn't qualified to yet. He didn't feel, but he wanted to. And he said, I went to the pastor and said, what can I do? And he said, the pastor said, we need our toilets cleaned. And he said, you know what? I became the number one toilet cleaner in that church. He said, I, I, I cleaned those toilets like it was the most important thing in my life. He said, I and he would give this testimony to his young pastors. He goes, and then the pastor called me in after he saw that, and God started to promote me and asked me to do this and do that. He goes, I never really thought I was going to be a talker or a speaker, but then one day, all of a sudden, they had me get up and give a testimony, and then God used me. And, and so he started growing in stature because he's humble before God. It wasn't his will. It was what God wanted, and, and God wanted him to develop. It's developed starting with toilets, and God will end up blessing you with more and more. Amen? Like when I first came to the church, our Good News Church here, um, it, it was called Faith Center International Outreach Church. Outreach Church. Um, and uh, they were meeting at a, uh, over in Park Ridge at a hotel. Um, it's now become a retirement center. And I went there, and then when my wife and I moved up here, we were going from hotel to hotel. Excuse me, meeting at hotels. And we go to the hotels, and at the hotels, they would set the chairs up, and they set them up like they didn't really care. 
you know, you, you know, when you ask somebody to do something, they'll do it because they're getting, you know, whatever they are an hour, but they don't have the interest. They don't care. They're just doing it to get it done with. And so that it would be sloppy. The aisles would be too close together. So if you try to walk down, it's hard. The seats would be too close, you know, see each other this way also. It was terrible. And so I would come into the, to the place, and I had my responsibilities, and I would come in, and a guy would be there that really could almost drive you crazy because this guy would redo all the chairs. He, he didn't like the way the chairs were. He didn't like the way it was set up because he had this spirit of perfection for God. And he would redo most of the chairs. And I would go, man, oh man, he has a lot of tenacity because me, I just, let's have the meeting. But he would do it over and over again and he would make sure those chairs were perfect. And I used to say, what the heck, you know? And this guy's name was Gary Kathan, by the way. And he would always make sure those chairs were right. And after... A couple of times I realized what he was doing it, and I watched the service and I watched how they would flow easier and people would get in and out easier. And I respected that. And so God started using him. He was, a, he was an usher, then he was a chair mover, <laughs> or a chair mover usher. <laughs> then God put him in, in God, God gave him a real promotion. He got to marry Karen. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a huge promotion. <laughs> and, uh, and then he became the head of the children's ministry. And uh, he, he could right now, he's an he's a ordained minister of the Lord. He can preach right now. He's here helping this church out. But I saw how God promoted him. And, and I'm not trying to lift someone up. I'm trying to give an example, okay? And, and it's just an example. Uh, I could brag on Gary for a long time, but that's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to say that's an example of that. Amen? And so Ed Dufresne was a toilet cleaner, and Gary Kathan was a chair adjuster. <laughs> so if you ever need your chairs adjusted... Call Gary. If you need your toilets clean, well, I'm sorry. He's in heaven. You have to do that yourself. Uh, the next thing is Jesus grew in, in, in uh, wisdom. Remember, that's a primary thing. It's really important. Learn God's word. That's what you're doing tonight. In stature, humble yourself. God will exalt you. He'll take you from one to another. He may have you in the same area for a long time because you're so good at that. And there's nobody coming underneath. You can take your position. You're getting upset. God needs you there right now because there's no one to, to take your spot. Serve, and God will bring somebody sooner or later. Amen? Amen. And then knowledge. A knowledge you'll find in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. And this is our last scripture of the day. It's all the way through verse 11. Uh, knowledge. It's kind of like wisdom, but knowledge. And so we want you to see uh, in the New Testament, we were over Proverbs in the Old Testament for wisdom. Now we're here in Colossians chapter 1, 9. In the New Testament, knowledge is important. Um, do you have that, uh, Donna? For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. In with all knowledge, you hear that? That pray for each other, that you'll be filled with knowledge. Uh, pray for me. I, I ask you, please, pray for me. I want a new revelation of the word of God. I want knowledge, and so please pray for me. And I'll pray for you. Let's pray for each other, Amen. Uh, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard of it, uh, do not cease, in other words, don't stop, to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with what? The knowledge of his will in all wisdom, remember wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy, that would be uh, your stature, walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being uh, fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, uh, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all, uh, unto all patience and longsuffering and joyfulness. Uh, today we just it's really talking about uh, you can increase and you must increase. Um, there was a great man of God that, that said if you're not increasing, you're decreasing. Uh, you're losing it. So it's, if you put a glass of water out, set it over a long period of time, it evaporates and it doesn't stay where it's at. Uh, it's kind of like that when it comes to spiritual things. You always want to feed yourself. You don't want to lose anything. You want to keep pouring more in, keep pouring more in. Why settle with a, you know, a glass half full? Keep filling it up, keep filling it up, keep filling it up, keep filling it up, keep filling it up. Amen? Amen. 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 God is good. Give God a hand clap, why don't you please? God is good. So we can increase. We need to increase. And Wednesdays, by the way, should be packed out because... This is where we get a lot of knowledge. This is where we, we, we get knowledge, we get wisdom, we, we get understanding. And we humble ourselves and do what God's asked us to do. So I, I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for uh, being those who have made a decision 
that I'm going to be here on Wednesdays. I'm going to receive from the Word of God. I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. And I know this, as we do this, uh, you and I will grow, and we'll decrease in the junk, and we'll increase in uh, the God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. In a moment, uh, this handsome man's going to come up here. Wasn't that a great praise and worship uh, this last Sunday? That's all about Sunday. Man, that was such a powerful time with the Lord. Thank you, my friend. And, and he's... He's so humble, he's proud, he's proud of his humbleness, but, 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 but it's, it's hard to pay the man a compliment, because I go, that was real good art, and he points up, I'm looking, is there a mirror up there, you're looking at yourself, no, it, he's doing the right thing, he, he, he's humbling, but, but thank you Art, thank you for your, your serving the Lord here, thank you for coming in not serving the Lord, uh, I was walking down, I was walking to the lake, from my house and my wife says I'm over at Old Orchard Mall I called her and she says I'm at Old Orchard Mall and I go well where I'm walking I guess I could walk that way I can meet you there and I just love walking around in a mall so I I, <laughs> I don't know why but I started down that way and I was walking and all of a sudden I saw Arch your dad's name Edgar sorry Edgar and I saw the family out and I, I go, I didn't know that's where they lived. And I looked over, and I walked over, and I started talking to him. And I was talking to the whole family, and Arch disappeared. And pretty soon he comes back, and he kind of does one of these numbers and hands me a tissue because my nose was dripping. <laughs> and I said, thank you. I like this guy. Yeah, he, did, he didn't do, here, you need this. He did it kind of slick. And, uh, but he was so humble and so sweet back then. And then we started talking, started getting to know each other a little bit. And I found out that he led praise and worship when he was in the Philippines. And I said, well, would you, would you please uh, uh, audition with Kirk? And he put it off for a long time because he had to pray about it. And then as the Lord uh, led, he went and talked to Kirk. And now he's such a vital member of the family of God and the praise and worship team. So he, he started. He, he's, thank you. And, and he started humbly and God he was cleaning toilets, so to speak. He was just here. And then pretty soon, he's, he's helping lead praise and worship. That's a wonderful story. And that's how we grow in wisdom and stature. Amen? Amen. And besides that, all of that was done because his dad made sure he did it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pray for you. And then we're, we can also we're gonna go into praise and worship. And then uh, there's giving. The envelopes are in front of you. This is another area that people, I don't know why, their wisdom is greater than God's wisdom. God says, give, it'll be given back to you. And say, no, I'll be okay if I don't give. Give, and it'll be given back to you. Uh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that's what he also reap. The scripture's pretty clear there. Um, you know, uh, so we should be givers. Um, but it's our choice. But we need to pour in the word of God about giving and get, dissipate and get rid of what the world says about it. And, and then you'll become a giver and you'll be really blessed. So the envelopes are in front of you. A give, be a giver. If you have that little thing, no, 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 pour it out. Get rid of it because really that's garbage. It really is. Just be a giver. Give and, and God will bless us. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, uh, they're going to be by in a moment. Uh, the usherettes today. Are you an usher today? Are you an usher today? Okay, the usherettes will be back in a, by in a moment to receive your offering. Thank you for coming today. May the Lord richly bless you. I'm going to pray for you. He's going to sing some praise and worship. They're going to come by and receive the offering. And then he's going to say, get the heck out of here. That's how he does. He's terrible. I don't know. He wants to get home. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, we thank you for Rick who's not able to be here today. We just ask you to bless him. We thank you that he's a steady Eddie, that he's here, that he serves the Lord. We thank you for uh, Kirk another leader in that praise and worship and we thank you for Arch we thank you that he's steady we thank you for him we thank you that he encourages us and Father we thank you for Good News Church we thank you for those coming to this church those of like precious faith those friends of ours that are here today and we know what the world says that, oh church isn't that nice but your word says it's important and we know it is so Heavenly Father we're taking your your look at church and godly people we thank you for each other we thank you for those that are sitting around us i thank you for those that i'm standing in front of i thank you for those that are listening on the internet i thank you for those that love you father and are hungry for you i thank you for those that are trying to learn the first time and those that are adding to their knowledge i thank you for those who are have fallen and gotten back up 
I thank you for those that are running and never even tripped. I thank you for those that are here tonight hurting. And I ask you to touch them and bless them. And I thank you for those that are here tonight that say, I haven't been hurting, but I want to make sure I lift up others in prayer. I thank you for those. I thank you for those that are giving and have a vision of not just their kingdom, but your kingdom. And I thank you, Father God, and I do ask you to richly bless them for their giving. I do thank you for Arch as I've talked about him, and I ask you to bless him and his household. Watch over them, bless them, encourage them, and I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kirk.